Welcome along guys, well I'm back out on that H2 <laughs> and it's actually time for its first service. I've done 580 miles, 600 miles is the first service, so I'm going to Kawasaki dealer, get that first service done and then I can start to increase the revs until she's finally running! <laughs> Well, what's it been like owning a H H2? <laughs> I do apologise for how I pronounce my H's. I have a habit of saying H, not H. So apologies to those people who said they wanted to put their fist through their <laughs> monitors whenever I said the word H. So what's it been like living with this bike? It's It's been interesting. Since the, uh, I think, tank gate, since I smashed the tank up, I've sort of gelled with it a bit more now. I've sort of put all that behind me now. Um, and I'm really starting to enjoy the bike now. I'm finding it a little bit more uncomfortable than the GSX-R. I know I originally said it's as comfortable as the GSX-R. It's not quite. The GSX-R is back on the road now. It's finally mine. I finally have the logbook. I've finally been able to tax it. So I'll be bringing you an update on that bike soon with the carbon wheels and the map and whatnot. But, uh, Compared to the GSX-R, I think the back of the bike is higher on this. The seat is harder, so I may look at getting a, a different padded seat. Maybe Louis Moto could help me out there. And the clip-ons are about in the same position, but because the arse of the bike's a bit higher, I think you've got a little bit more weight on your wrist. And I think the pegs are actually a tiny bit higher as well. But it's not too different, but it's not... Uh, it's not the most comfortable bike. I mean, this isn't like a H2SX. The SX is a comfortable tourer. This is a full-on sports bike position on this. It's taken me quite a while to rack up those 600 miles, just because I've got so many other bikes to ride, test ride reviews. You know, it's, it's t I've had this bike probably six weeks and I've only just reached 600 miles. So I know some people would have that done in a weekend, but uh, I've, I've really been so careful with the running. I've done it as per the Kawasaki manual. Well, I've, I've started to just increase the revs a little bit now. I've done that, I've not just stayed below 4,000 revs the whole time. After sort of 250 miles, I started to take it up to sort of five, five and a half. And as it's got closer now, I've gone over 500 miles, I've taken it to seven a couple of times just to start to work the motor. The service happens now. So it's probably going to have just over 600 miles by the time it goes in. And then I've got another 400 miles <laughs> to finish off the running. But I can take it to sort of 7,000. I think once you pass that 600, you can start to open it up a bit then for that like, the remaining 400 miles. So thank the Lord, it's almost done. But the problem is, of course, when you're running in, you're never on the power. So you've never got that weight off your wrist. So it's on the wrist all the time. So I think once it's run in and I can open it up, it gives you some relief from that constant uh, constant weight on the wrist. But uh, enough moaning. Oh, tingly, tingle, wristy, achy. Another thing this could do with is the cruise control. Cruise control on a sports bike is a must. I absolutely think it's a must when you've got that weight on your wrist. It's to, to get the hand off the throttle and just rest it for a while. It's bliss it is. Every sports bike should have cruise control. You don't need it on an adventure bike when you're upright. It's these bikes you need it on. Mm, left here. I've also got no indicators at the moment because I've, uh, I'm halfway through fitting the RNG tail tidy to this. So I, 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 there's a video coming of it. And I had a few, uh, I tried to be clever and put some different indicators on and it all, gone, it all went a bit wrong. So. But I've got some Rizima indicators to go on, but I haven't finished the job yet. <laughs> so I've got no rear indicators. So the front ones are obviously flashing like crazy, but I've got no rears. And you may also notice my delicious zero gravity screen. I've also put that on there. The reason being the standard one is very, very low. So you don't get much sort of wind protection from it. And also you can see through it and it's really tight fitting to this it's really tight to this underpiece here. And any bugs and stuff, and when you wash the bike, you just get drips underneath of it and you can't clean it. 
So if, if I get a tinted one, you're not going to notice the what on earth is going on around here. Oh, God. On the wrists, it's not the best traffic bike in the world, this. Moan, 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 it's all he ever does. So you're just starting to build those revs. Give it a little bit of mid-range. I've been really happy with how I've run it in. But I'm itching to see how it goes. But we may take it to 7,000. We're going to take it to 7,000 revs on the way home. How exciting. I love this bit of road. This is an excellent bit of road, this. It's a beautiful bit of road. It's the A339 from Alton to Basingstoke. Nice, mate. I mean, it's, I hate it when people do that. Why do people do that? I do not want you driving in the mud and chucking up shit to let me by. I have to overtake you because you're sat in the mud. Oh, I hate when car drivers do that. They think they're trying to be friendly and moving out of the way, but I can overtake mate if I want to overtake. Don't worry about that. Do not put your car in the mud and throw up stones at me to do it. <laughs> How ungrateful. Well, don't you start with it as well. Out of the shit, mate. I'll shut you down. I'll see you when I arrive at Greenham Karazaki. And the servicing begins. See you in a bit. There we go, service all done. Greenham Karazaki. It was good actually, impressed with what they've done there, I have to say. I would have gone to Wheels Motorcycles of course, because they're a Karazaki dealer, but they're miles from me, they're about three and a half hours away from where I live, so it's not practical to go to Wheels, unfortunately. Sorry Wheels, <laughs> I've been unfaithful. So I have another 400 miles to do. <laughs> of taking it easy and then I can start to unleash well I can start to unleash the beast a little bit we can take it to 7,000 revs now so mods I've got planned for this I've done a bit more research about these now obviously so I think I'm going to go for the 20 millimeter higher up clip-ons just to make it a little bit more comfortable just a tad also these are as I mentioned a little bit slow to steer a tiny little bit slow to change direction would be a better way of putting it what I've heard about what people have told me thank you Jamie is rather than a 55 section rear tyre go for the 60 which just pushes the rear up a tiny bit more onto its nose and just makes it turn a bit faster so that's a mod a lot of the H2 owners do on the exhaust front I've actually working with a company called Pro Race based in Peterborough they're making me an end can for this, which looks like it's, it's going to have some LCR logos on it. It's going to be quite cool. So they're working on an end can. I've also been speaking to Brock's Performance. Actually, I've got the Brock system on the GSXR. Um, they do a H2 Brock's full system. So probably for next year, I'm going to put the full system on this. Uh, I'm going to go for the uh, ceramic coated black system with the slash cut <laughs> so it's going to be noisy what happens on this standard is when the bike is at 12,000 rpm at the red line the throttle bodies are only open 33 percent they're actually cl almost closed they're barely open so what i'll probably do is get it flashed to remove that restriction so the throttle bodies are open 100 percent when your throttle's open 100 percent at 12,000 revs and that unleashes a shit ton more power, as you can imagine. So I think you're then looking at probably 230, 240 horsepower at the back wheel, just by getting the throttle bodies open. Which is that, you know, you're not really changing the boost pressure. All you're doing is making the throttle bodies open as they should be. So, you know, it, it, you shouldn't have to worry about damaging the engine as such. You're just letting it run as it should. Another thing I found out is these run very, very rich from the factory. These are massively rich at the top end. So if you just map it slightly, you can actually get a lot more power. So I think fueling adjusted a little bit, just to make it run a bit nicer. But I've also heard you've got to be careful because the reason they're so rich at the top is to keep the engine cool. So they make them rich to keep the engine cool. So if you get them running at 13 point whatever it is on the, fuel, on the air fuel ratio, 
then you're not going to be getting that extra cooling from the fuel so uh, I don't know yet I think you have to be look very carefully before you actually get the mapping adjusted but you, know, you need to make sure you take it to someone who really knows what they're doing with these I don't think it's like mapping like a normally aspirated bike because of that richness that richness is there for a reason to make sure the bike doesn't melt so that first service at Greenham cost £209 which I didn't think was too bad they quoted 210 they did it for 209 that's a copper in front <laughs> slow down chops ah oh, that's the end of my fun but a copper oh great he's letting me by that's all I want I've got him behind me now. I prefer doing you in front. I do have a slightly small number plate, so I'm hoping he's not going to tug me for it. I got a nice quiet exhaust though, Gov. Keep it steady chops, you got the feds behind you. <laughs> Traction control lights coming on, I think that's being a bit uh, overzealous. Let's have them at the lights. Say these are a little bit slow to change direction, but they do handle, they do go around corners. If we can find the corner. It does handle, it's just a little bit slow to change direction. Oh yeah! Oh mama! Love it! It's lovely in the bends, very stable, tracks align perfectly. It can be a bit sort of aggressive on and off the throttle a little bit. That could be another reason to, to get it mapped. Not really to get extra power, but just to smooth out that, that slight bit of snatchiness. So it's so powerful at the bottom end of the rev range. Because on the GSXR, below 3000 revs is nothing. This is really powerful below 3000 revs. It doesn't kick as much when you go above 3000 is what the GSX-R does but I think just a bit of fuel the mapping could just sort out that snatchiness because there's not different engine maps on this there's no different engine maps to play with like on most new bikes you've got a rain mode and that's it rain mode and normal mode so you can't sh select a less snatchy ma map if you just want a poodle. Oh, it's a rough, rough bit of road this. It used to be lovely this. It's definitely gone downhill. There we go guys. It won't be long now. That service is done, a couple of hundred miles and it will be full power. Let's see what that supercharger is like. Oh, quite excited. Looking good so far. See you later guys. Catch you next time. This is power level one, which is full power. Yeah, boy.
Check it, man. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Oh, <laughs> shit.